sports related show about pro sports, college sports, all the way down to little league and everything, everything in between. Today we got to uh, get caught up in some of the things that happened. Uh, March Madness uh, was a great NCAA tournament. Uh, we the Cinderella team was Florida Gulf Coast and Wichita State. The number nine seed went all the way up to the final four. Uh, they were surprises, but nothing more shocking than uh, Louisville guard Kevin Ware's broken leg. That was just, that's going to leave a, a vivid picture for everybody to remember. Uh, ultimately, it was the Louisville Cardinals who beat the Michigan Wolverines in a great uh, Monday night game for the national championship. And so that's, uh, uh, that was a great uh, NCAA tournament. And uh, after that, we had opening day with Major League Baseball. The Dodgers, with their new ownership, Magic Johnson and the Guggenheim Corp, uh, put on a spectacular opening day. Uh, complete game by Ker uh, Clayton Kershaw. Four hit, complete game shutout, including the eighth inning home run over center field. Uh, over in Anaheim, the Angels uh, had opening day. It took them 13 innings to beat the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, so they're getting off to a tough start, but it's a long season for all these teams. And uh, now we've got the NBA playoffs. And what will the Lakers do without Kobe Bryant? Or the rest of us, for that matter. But uh, they got Dwight Howard, and it's time for him to earn some of that money. And uh, do they need another coach? But uh, our only hope in L.A. right now is the Clippers. The surprising Clippers with... Uh, Chris Paul, cp 3 and uh, The Blake Show. So those are some of the things we got to look, got to look forward to. Uh, we want to begin uh, our show uh, uh, on a somber note, but we'd like to extend our, our prayers to all the ones that were uh, affected in these bombings in the Boston Marathon. So thoughts and prayers go out to them. Uh, so let's get right to our show. We've got uh, plenty of things to cover. My first guest is uh, a, a boxing legend who had several title fights. He was a U.S. featherweight champion, uh, was an announcer for boxing. Prime Ticket Sports started uh, the boxing uh, uh, networks uh, that Jerry Buss put out. He worked with Chick Hearn as an announcer for eight years. Uh, so my first guest today is Ruben Castillo. Ruben, brother. Thank you, Louis. Thank you for having me hey, on the show. Hey, it's nice to be here, bro. It's been a long time. I'm glad you have your own show. I thank think you. it's wonderful, bro. Yeah, thank you. We we <clears> got <throat> a, a variety of stuff to cover from Little League, and we, we want to cover, educate the community about sports in general, how... There's good sports, there's bad sports, there's safe sports and unsafe sports. And one of the things we want to educate the people about is not allowing injuries, injuries that are unnecessary, preventable injuries, and such as, you know, in football, the concussions and things like that. But with boxing, uh, I, I, I just think it's a great, it, it's, it's a tremendous honor to have you on our show. The, the fact that you've, you fought some amazing title fights and, uh, you know, I think we have a photo here that, I want to show everybody. Sorry about this. The shot here. Tell me about this shot. What is this? First of all, this guy here, that was about 70 pounds ago, Louis. Another, that was a long time ago. And this guy, ago. that was another person. And this guy here is Danny Little Red Lopez. This photo, it was, uh, it was signed, we signed this in 1979. Of course, I had hair. Of course, you can tell. In 1979, Louis, I was supposed to fight Danny Little Red Lopez. I was going to be uh, 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 be the featherweight champion of the world. The problem came up when Don King decided to pull me out of this fight and made me fight a guy. I don't know. You maybe have heard of him. His name is Alexis Arguello. A boxing legend. He was in a heavier weight. Of I course, remember. and he weighed 130 pounds, and he had a lot of problems making that weight. As a matter of fact, that was going to be his last fight at 130. He was moving up to 135. As a matter of fact, he only had two fights at that weight and moved right into 140. Because Alexis was five foot ten, bro. He was tall, the greatest guy you'll ever meet in your life. Well, we're, I was supposed to fight Danny. 
the Giorgino family decided that it would be easier fight to have Salvador Sanchez fight him and make and put me with with Alexis. And the reason for that was because Alexis was going to fight a guy by the name of Samuel Serrano, who was a junior lightweight champion of the world at one time. So in training, he hurt his hand. So they need ABC Sports. They need somebody who was marketable. And uh, if Don uh, King, someone known, like right? Yourself. And so if Don King couldn't uh, get them that market or um, a fighter marketable enough, they were going to pull all of ABC Sports as his dates with ABC Wide World Sports from Don King. From Don King, so that was going to be a problem. So he told me, if you don't fight him, because I said I don't want to fight Alexis. That's not my weight division. This is my weight division. So he says, if you don't fight him, you'll never fight for the title. And this was your first title? That was my first world title, 1980, January 20th. I had three weeks to get ready for that fight. So because of Howard Cosell and ABC Sports, I won the first 10 rounds of the fight, and I got stopped in the 11th. It was scheduled for 15. I was 45-0 and 0 when I fought Alexis. So after that fight, as a featherweight, as a featherweight and all my fights were as a featherweight. So after that fight, because of them, Salvador Sanchez beat Danny Lopez, and so they made him fight me, fifteen rounds, and so we fought. And I want all you to watch the tape. Go to YouTube and pull up the Ruben Castillo Salvador Sanchez fight. I whooped his booty. I whooped him. But again, you know, we're going to talk about... Uh, hopefully we talk yeah. about the bad decisions. This yeah. goes way back, Louie. Yeah. It goes so far back, bro. And and now there's times when, you know, we have to make a, 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 a stand. We have, we have to be... We got to come forth, bro. Look, look at, look at uh, uh, Manny Pacquiao. What happened with Tim Timothy with Bradley? Bradley? He didn't lose that fight, bro. Yeah, we'll get into that. But but anyway, that's what happened. That's what that picture is from a hundred years ago. These these fights, these title fights that you fought, were pretty much Don King's kind of like you were his ace of the hole to bail him out of stuff. But really, having a sacrifice where what? Where, where you were like the Juan Laporte fight. Well, yeah, and and, and there's another case when when Laporte fight came up. Well, he, the thing with the with the Salvador Sanchez fight. It was such it was such a controversial decision that right after the fight, Salvador got off the ring and they made him get back in the ring. Cristobal Rosa says, "You better respect Ruben Castillo." So he made him get back in the ring. He got in the ring and they gave him a decision. They raised his hand. He was so after that, I knew I wasn't going to get another shot at him. So they kept me instead of dropping me down to three, four, five in the world. They kept me ranked number one in the world. But everybody kept going around me. Everybody, Gerald Ford. Uh, 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 Juan Laporte, he gave Juan a whooping. And then it got to, and so they tell me, Ruben, the only way we can get a mandatory rematch is fight Juan Escobar. That's the only guy who's fought a draw with Salvador Sanchez. So I fought him. I knocked him out in eight rounds. So they said, okay, here's the deal. Now you got to fight Antonio Becerra, the only guy to ever beat Salvador Sanchez. Fine, where are we fighting? In Mazatlan. So I got to go to his backyard. You got to go to his kitchen. I said, I'll, go, I'll go to his kitchen. So, Louis, I go over there. In the third round, I leave him his arm hanging. He was out, bro. That's where he was. He was stuck on the rope. He was stuck on the rope. We had to get under the ring, bro, because we fought in front of 17,000 Mexicanos wow. that were rooting for him. Five were rooting for me. They were in my corner. We all had to get under the ring. They threw bottles, chairs, everything. And I didn't get a Another, I didn't ever get a shot at, at, at Salvador again. The rematch. He died in a car accident. He got killed in a car accident. But you know a little did, bit about boxing, don't you, my brother? Yeah, I did, <laughs> did my research. And so then they give the, the title. Okay, uh, so, so, okay. It, it gets inherited now by it, Juan Laporte. It gets worse. The, 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 the plot thickens. So I was so ranked. This time, they, you, you would think they would give you a five. So, so a yeah, area. Right. So I'm ranked number one in the world. Juan Laporte is ranked number three in the world, and Mario Miranda is ranked number two. So, what do you think? So you would get you the first, the number one would get. I will fight number two, and the winner of that is a champion, and they have to defend against number three. Well, it was the wrong thing again. 
Don King couldn't fight at that time. He was being indicted for tax evasion. So they banned him from doing fights in Las Vegas because he named Caesar's Palace as a conspir co-conspirator to this and blah, 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 blah. So he says, the only way we're going to do this is you're going to have to sit out, Ruben. You're going to have to wait till Juan Laporte fights Mario Miranda from Colombia. Now, the fight was so going to be... three fought two. Three fought two, one sat out. So with then, because... Mario Miranda's Colombian. There's a big Colombia, big, big Colombia uh, 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 following fall in New York. And Juan Laporte is from, from Puerto Rico. So he's a New York. So the only thing that made sense to Don was money. Only so in that, America. That fight was going to draw a lot of people because of Colombia and Puerto Rico and New York. So I set out. Okay. So now, the, the, now Laporte wins a fight in 1985. I'm sorry, 1983, two years later, bro. Two, two, almost three years later, I get a fight for the title. Okay? Now there's no more Salvador Sanchez. He's, he got killed in a car accident. I got messed around uh, and not being able to fight Mario Miranda. I knocked him silly. <laughs> so now I'm fighting, Juan, so I'm fighting Juan Laporte. So I told Don, so, we're going, where are we going to have the fight at? He goes, we're going to Puerto Rico. Ooh. Now I got to go to his back door again. Here we go. His backyard. So that fight was a good fight, Louis. We went 12 rounds. He won a split decision. I think he won a unanimous decision. I got beat. But, and then after that, I said, you know what? I'm, uh, uh, I said, I I've got to fight him. He, that's another guy who wouldn't fight a rematch. Then he fought Zach Padilla. The Zach attack. Zach mm -hmm. attack whooped his booty. So, it, it, you know, and then I'm deciding, you know what? I, I don't know if I want to do this. Then I get. Then Don King calls me. Says I got a fight for you. You're gonna be the champ. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> this guy nobody knows. He's nothing. He's a tomato can. Like, who is he? Julio Cesar Chavez. So they send me a tape of him, and 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 I looked at the fight. And, and this this is 1985 now. This is an 85. And I said I'm gonna whoop this guy's booty. I'm gonna whoop. I'm gonna give him a boxing lesson. That fight, Louis, was dead even until after the national anthem. <laughs> then it went straight downhill. When that goes on, or the land and of the... It started going downhill, bro. <laughs> By the fourth round, I hit him with a left hook right at the bell, bro. And he come up to my face and said something to me in Spanish that pertained to my mom, dude. She was... And I said, oh, she, now we're in trouble. So I go back to my corner. I said, dude, he's mad. He's pissed. <laughs> We're in a lot of fight now. And so uh, he put 15 stitches, broke my cheekbone, and two ribs in six rounds. Now, how new, how far into his career was he at that time? 39 and 0. And he went to 92 and 0. I was part of that O. <laughs> and I told Don King, I said, Don, this guy's not your ordinary champion, bro. He's going to be a legend. He goes, you think so? Yes. He goes, you want a rematch? Why? <laughs> no. I don't want a rematch. Look, I'm going to the hospital, not Disneyland. <laughs> I don't want a rematch. Come on now. I thought you were my friend. And so, so, so then after, after that fight, Jerry Buss came to my dressing room. He says, Ruben, when you get your stitches taken out, give me a call. I, got, I bought a, a cable company called Prime Ticket. I want you to do color commentary for boxing. With Chick Hearn. With Chick Hearn. And I'm thinking, what the heck's color commentary? You know? Mm -hmm. So I go and I find out what color commentary is. So you got to hear this. The very first fight we did, Chick Hearn introduces me. We're going to open up with Ruben Castillo. He's going to do now color commentary for Prime Ticket. Ruben, we saw your fight with Julio Cesar Chavez. Great fight. Da, da, da. Tell the fans how this fight is scored. So I said, it's a 10-point must system. The winner of the round gets 10 points. The loser gets 9. In case of a knockdown, the fighter getting knocked down gets 8. And, of course, the guy standing up gets 10. So take your pins out, and let's go to this fight together. And my friends in Bakersfield, take out your spray cans, and let's go to this fight together. And Chick was laughing, and bro. And then we went to commercial, and they blew up the switchboard. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. That, that's what we're going to do now. Uh, Rube, Rube, we'll be back. Uh, we're going to take a break, and we're going to... Uh, our version of a commercial, and we'll return with City Lose Sports View. <laughs> 